So let's start this. Let's have a look from beginning. Can everybody see that okay? Yeah. yeah. So keeping community spirit going post lockdown. So let's have a look. So I'm, I've got an agenda. I know it looks all professional and stuff, but it's just to, just to give it a bit of that. So it's a scripted vibe. So welcome everyone and uh, thanks for joining our Zoom call today. So my name's Paul, I'm in Manchester, I'm a community network developer based in North England, so I cover all of North England. I work for Eden Project Communities. No, the next hour and a half maybe, might be a bit shorter than that, depending on how much discussion and stuff. So I'll be uh, co-hosting with my colleague KT, who does the same job as me, but in Scotland. Hi KT, give us a wave, lovely. Uh, right, so here's the agenda for today. So let's have a look. So a bit of housekeeping. I'll let you know where the loos are and stuff. That's what it feels like, doesn't it? Because we've had a couple events. Um, I'll do a little introduction, see what's been happening out there in the lockdown land and so some of the positive stuff. Um, we're going to have a little breakout room to discuss some of the local activities that's been happening. Um, a bit of feedback. Then we're going to have a few top tips from me, what I've picked up over uh, over lockdown, see how we can keep it going, the, the sustain this sort of good stuff that's happening. And then um, we're going to have another breakout session where we can discuss and share tips between us and support each other with that. Then a bit of feedback and then we're going to wrap up. So just to cut the housekeeping bit. So try to keep yourselves on mute when you're not speaking. It's nice and quiet out there at the moment, so awesome. And if you like to speak, just raise your hand. Um, any questions crop up, just put them in the chat box and uh, Katie will have a look at that. Um, yeah, and just relax and, and enjoy it. So here we go, let's have a look. So if you don't know, um, Eden Project Communities, UK wide team, me, Katie, I think Sophie's on the call as well. There's about 20 of us that cover the UK. My most famous thing is the, the big lunch. Who's heard of the big lunch? Who's done a big lunch? Yeah, so, um, and we are connected to Eden Project in Cornwall. That's the mothership. So we sort of spread their ethos and culture across the UK. So that's that bit. Let's have a look. So I'm just thinking we've got, can people, if they can, just change the the name to where they are as well, maybe. Like I've got Paul in Manchester, Case in Edinburgh, that'd be nice to see where people are. How do we do that? Oh, you click on your photo, you click on your photo and three little dots and it says rename. <clears throat> yeah, don't matter if you can, it's just a nice little touch, it's, um, it's quite fun. So let's have, a, let's have a look, so that's who we are. Um, now then, so straight into what's been happening out there in the um, in, in UK in lockdown. So what, one of the silver linings during this current COVID-19 crisis has been the extraordinary wave of social solidarity that was swept through the country. So let's have a look at some stats on that. So last stat I got on this, three quarter of a million people signed up to help out our health services. Yeah, phenomenal. Oh, hello, Katrina, waving there. A lot of people did that. So that's, um, that was nice. So now, and then, 3,000, last, these are last count I got, 3,500 and counting local mutual aid groups on the mutual aid website. You again, Katrina, wow. <laughs> so, and more than two thirds of Brits are pledging to do more in the local area when the coronavirus pandemic ends. So I've worked that out at 66 mil, that's 44 million people are pledging to do more in the local communities after lockdown. 44 mil. So that's a lot of litter pickers and stuff. So we should have loads of veg in a really, really tidy country. So let's have a look at another one. So 68% of people, yeah, don't want to lose the renewed sense of community spirit in their area, right? I don't know what the other 32% are thinking. Like, no, we want it to be a bit rubbish. But yeah, so 68%. So that's, that's, that's why we're all here today. I want to keep that going. So let's have a look. National natural phenomena. I've got some stats here as well. Just got me a little iPad thing. 
So this this page it uh, highlights a national example of what has happened across the UK that we couldn't dream of before. Anybody guess what it is? What's been going on? Anyone? I can't see everybody, but just shout out. Growing your own vegetables. Yes. <laughs> yes. So um, this, let's let's look at the stats. So, but it's been, the being on furlough has give people time to do this, and it. So the, we've created this like home growing veg revolution. I, I have a tiny flat, so I've, I've I've grown a pot of basil. That's it. That's my thing. But I have shared some with neighbours. So there we go. So um, let's have a look. So now this is this was funny when we were googling all this. Five hundred percent rise in compost sales. Six hundred percent rise in seed sales. Just, just so if you're on the gardening centre, you're laughing. So what's happened with this though? People have been sharing this homegrown growth because I know a lot of people who have allotments and stuff. They grow too much and they don't know what to do with it. So they're all sharing. So it's increasing community, increasing well-being. So it's a real silver lining of what's been going on. Now then, so let me get the stats up. Oh yeah. Big, big thing around mental health as well. Loads of people saying that their mental health and relative well-being has, has increased since they're doing the gardening. Everybody knows that. And the biggest, so it's transforming this in, in COVID. We're looking at when we come out of it, that how we think about nature, so respect it a bit more. Food security, so, you know, looking after a food more. And that community spirit. So there we go. The veg growing revolution. Now, that, so that's a national one I could think of as an example. And the next one is a local, oh, hang on, one sec. I've got to take my tablet. I've been given tablets off dark. I shouldn't, I know I'm breaking the fourth wall or whatever, but the um, antibiotics, one sec. Sorry, the alarm went off. I'm, I'm being really strict with them to get rid of this infection. Now we need to know what sort of infection you've got, Paul. Oh, it's not COVID. I thought it was at first. It's, um, I've had a severe allergy to something, so I'm on steroid tablets and, that, and it's causing an infection and it's gone in under my eye. So oh. I should have been like a pirate today, really. You should have gone natural with colloidal silver. Much amazing stuff. What's this? Mm -hmm. Colloidal silver. Oh no, so yeah, I'm really anxious about having these tablets and because I, I don't like the big pharmacy, so... Put, yeah. put it, put it in the chat. I'll put it in the chat. Thank you. This has turned into a little uh, session for me, hasn't it, to get me illness. Yeah, so you, have you got a blocked tear duct? No. I've got, I've, I've got like an infection at the side of me. Oh, in your sinus? Ah, yeah. Oh, okay. So there's a lot of room there, there as well as on, in your forehead as well. There's yeah. plenty of space for it to go wandering. Oh, that's what I don't I want. leave that with you. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, so anyway, back to, back to the, um, the, the good stuff going on in COVID. So Christine on the picture, I don't, I don't know if she's in today or anybody knows her, but Christine, she's um, a volunteer from uh, Friends of Light Oaks Park in Salford. And obviously they do a lot of gardening and they've got this teos that's lovely. And they, they, they haven't been able to do that sort of stuff. So what she's been doing is learning how to write bids because she's had quite a bit of time. So she's learned how to write bids and she's been successful and she's won £6,000 from the government COVID sort of um, the, what they've been working with National Lottery Community Fund. So she got, she got six grand, very nice. And here she is showing, showing off. I don't think she's got money in her, uh, in her hands. It's not a tray of money. But there she is at Lighthouse Park. And what you can see to the left is she also got a lovely freezer from a local firm. I think it were a brewery who found out. So now they can sell ice cream and stuff. So they're coming out of COVID stronger. So the national scene is and loads of local things like this are as well. So now then, that's the intro. That's the good stuff that's been going on. And now over to Katie, because we're going to go into breakout rooms and share... I'd, I'd love it if you could share some stories. It can be national, but it'd be nice if they were really hyper-local, little stories that you've witnessed or you've done. So if you'd like to do that, and then after, we'll have, we'll have 15 minutes. Would you like me to move on to the feedback, Paul? Yeah, yeah, please, Katie. Fantastic. Thank you. 
So welcome back. I hope everyone enjoyed their, their breakout rooms. Um, it's a chance just to get to chat to people in a smaller group and you get to know people a little bit better than you do in these, these big rooms. There's not much chance to, to pick up on what everyone's doing. So um, I would love to hear some of your stories and I'm sure everyone else would as well. There were eight, I think eight rooms all together and we ended up, I don't know how these things happen, we ended up with two people in one, uh, between two and five people in rooms. So apology if you ended up in a slightly smaller room than expected, but sometimes you get the unexpected conversations when the unexpected things happen. So let's hope that that's what, what happened. Um, so would any of the um, rooms like to share a little bit about some of the stories they talked about or their, the, um, any light bulb moments or anything that really sparked your curiosity or imagination? Um, I'll, I'll have a look through the two screens so you can kind of have a wave or just pop in the chat um, if you'd like to, to, to share just and I will um, I'll have a look there. Was, was that you waving Sue or were you just, um, just tucking your hair? <laughs> it's horrible when you get picked on like that isn't it? Sorry Sue. Um, now, I've left a little bit of quiet space. I was really hoping that somebody might like to, to share. Sue, go for it. Hello? Oh, Can you hear me? Perfect. Yeah. Hi, yeah, well, I was one that ended up in the two-person group. And we had a fabulous conversation. <laughs> it was great, really nice. Um, I, I think uh, I'm allowed to talk for me in in uh, relation to to this. I, I'm I'm really quite concerned that it seems that lockdown grew all this, developed all this, and, and I, that's why I'm on this because I'm actually. It seems like some of the barriers are beginning to come up again. You know, neighbours sort of just getting on with their lives. So, and. Um, we have a community garden anyway, and it, that that has worked so beautifully over the lockdown period. And it'll, I think people have used it a lot. And I love the veg idea and this veg art that's made me, that's already got an idea for that. Um, and, um, and those common spaces are just extraordinary. You know, the people get so much enjoyment from them. And um, I put out some rocks, I collect rocks and put some over there, intending to do a care and of hope with local people, but I didn't get round to it. And what's lovely is people have started, no, no, none of the kids have taken the rocks, but they keep on hiding them in different places around the garden. You know, it's, it's a beautiful little thing because each time you go there, it's, oh, where have they gone? And, you know, they start looking for them. But anyway, but my, what I'm interested in ways of I'm looking forward to that the ways of moving really continuing this you know in a very sustainable way in a very real authentic way um, and I'm also quite concerned about rubbish because I don't know if it's the same around the country but um, one of the things seems to be it's a new habit just to dump your rubbish anywhere and also I know that recycling centres locally here, you have to go through a sort of Spanish inquisition to be able to take anything there at the moment. So there's, we're getting loads of rubbish piled around here. You know, big things that people have been, you know, their projects, they, you know, they've been decluttering during lockdown and um, maybe how to use that productively, you know, rather than get all angsty about it. That's it. That's, that's great, Sue, and I especially like that you ended on, a, on an up note there, saying, you know, there is this challenge, but let's hope that people find productive ways to, to overcome it. That's, that's a really nice, hopeful, hopeful way to look at it. Um, now that Sue's broken the ice, can I tempt anyone else to come and, come and share anything? Claire? Hello, everyone. Uh, so I'm just going to start by showing you this image. So this is from my live grill at home video at our community allotment this morning. So sunflowers are a symbol of happiness and optimism. So I thought I'd start with that. Um, so during lockdown, we did weekly grill at home lives on Facebook. So I'm no expert, but I've got an allotment and you can see from behind I'm quite interested in growing and nature. And they've really taken off at all different age groups getting involved. Lots of teenage fans, I'm really pleased. Um, and they've been showing us what we're growing. We've been pa making paper pots out of newspaper, growing sunflowers from birdseed, and make, growing tomatoes from leftovers in the fridge. So very much what you had to hand and you couldn't buy online or from a shop. 
Um, since then, uh, we do have a community allotment, which we've been harvesting crops from and putting out for the community, but we're about to open it back up to the community next week. During lockdown, we did have to close that because it was a shared site. And we were just mindful of the other um, allotment holders, not wanting lots of people on there and stuff. Um, but yeah, gardening has been a big thing for us and uh, I've seen it going on in other places as well. And uh, yeah, I thought I'd just share that with you. And also talking about um, how we keep, the, keep it going, the community spirit. Well, we've just launched a new activity program to keep people occupied and to start to bring them out of the house and to try and connect people online, offline. And we've just enlisted volunteers throughout the village as community ambassadors. So I would like one for every street, but what we've ended up as is a person for every block. So I have about 17 village residents involved who each week go out flyering, telling people what's on the following week that they can get involved with, how they can find out about it. So it might be taking part in a flower pot competition, flower pot men competition in the end of August, or it could be popping through a quiz or a self-led trail around the village with clues and things to find. So although they know this village very well, when they go through my trail, it might, might discover something new. So just things to try and engage people, but also having that familiar face every week that someone from their block and their neighbor will hopefully bring confidence to people that aren't quite ready to come out yet or haven't perhaps engaged with any the online or offline activities. They might, I'm hoping, after a couple of weeks, ask who it is knocking on the door or putting the leaflet through and say, you know, I wouldn't mind getting involved with that, but, you know, I don't want to go on my own or I'm not too sure about this or how many people are there. So having a familiar face and that point of contact, we're hoping is a way forward because, of course, We've noticed with a lot of our community groups that some of the volunteers have now started to drop off because they're going back to work and also they perhaps feel that the need isn't as great as it was um, or perhaps they're needed elsewhere or taking on other duties. But if you can try and keep a few, that's a good progress, I think. I'll finish it there. Thank that's, you. That's great, Claire. Thank you. Um, and again, ending on that... Um, that concern as well that we've, we've talked about quite on a couple of calls before about how the informal volunteering might start to, to fall away again um, just at the moment when we like to, we'd like to keep all this all this going um, and that's something that we'll return to I think again on on future calls about how we we harness that um, again and encourage people to stay involved and connected and also fantastic to hear that you're engaging teenagers the holy grail well done um, now, Jackie said that, um, Jackie from Swansea, Jackie in Swansea, um, would like to share. I can't see you on my screen, Jackie, so just un unmute. Oh, there you are. Just mm -hmm. unmute. There you go. Um, I sometimes have really unstable, when it's raining, I have unstable connections, so I turn my um, video off. Um, I was in a really fantastic group with people from Cumbria and, and um, West Sussex, I think. Was it West Sussex? Yeah. Um, Exeter, Swansea, and I can see Lee Ellery is from Swansea as well. I actually live in Swansea, but work in Carmarthenshire, but obviously working at home at the moment. So we had some really interesting little stories throughout the group. Um, you know, in Carmarthenshire, we're a really rural area and obviously very different in Wales to what's happening in England and also in Scotland. Um, so, you know, we've still got the two metre rule, um, whereas in England, you've got the one metre rule. So it gets a bit confusing. Um, really, really confusing. So, but um, I was really interested to hear about pop-up libraries in, in Exeter where there's a shelter and really, really good idea. You know, people crying out for books because staying at home is really difficult for some people. So that was a really amazing idea. Um, and then um, there was boxes of books with a nine-year-old girl as well. That was um, from Jo. She talked about a really good story about a nine-year-old assisting and um, then also about her front garden allotment where people talk about you know these fantastic um, growing of the rhubarb and she's about to plant strawberries which are also going to be yummy um, so there was another story from Janet uh, Janet um, well, I had two Janets in the room so Janet in Cumbria the nine-year-old and they had yoga classes and some other classes I didn't quite get that written down um, but they've raised £1,500 for charity, which is amazing. 
so that's incredible work going on. Um, and then the, the other Janet lives in a cul-de-sac and she, she said that loads of people have dogs, but they walk the dogs and know the dog's name, but don't know each other's names. So she started up a little Facebook group and now she knows all the people's names and they've had coffee mornings. One of her friends has got a coffee van. So she came with a coffee van with cakes and sandwiches and da di da. They've also had a pizza night because she found somebody with a pizza van with, a, with an oven. Um, so they had a fantastic pizza night. Um, I really like the idea of community ambassadors or street ambassadors. I think that's a really, really cool thing. In Carmarthenshire, we've got over 300 Facebook groups that we've been in contact with. I work for an umbrella voluntary organisation, um, one of the CVCs, well, Carmarthenshire and Council for Voluntary Services. And um, we've worked tirelessly over the, over the last four months with these Facebook groups, but they are diminishing. Um, the work that they're doing is diminishing, and that's really quite sad for us. But one story I want to share, a 10-year-old girl decided to make scones, jam and cream and sell, which I, I think I mentioned um, to the group. And she also raised money for the NHS and a mental health charity, a local mental health charity. And her mom was doing the delivery of these scones, jam and cream for £5 a pop, which I think is pretty good, you know. Also checking in with people that they're okay, you know, they placed orders, they got their order, and apparently the scones are delicious. So that I think has covered all of the group or the room that I was in. So some amazing things happening throughout communities across the country and losing that um, connectivity is for me, or that, that sense of community is a real sad shame because people are going back to work and don't think they have to look after their neighbors like they have been doing. Um, you know, we are seeing a rise again, particularly in Manchester, around Greater Manchester, the rise in, um, you know, the virus hasn't gone away. It's not gone away, unfortunately, it's still there. And, you know, we have to make sure that the older people and the younger people, what we found in Carmarthenshire as well, is that the younger people haven't been interacting and that's major for them because it's like, you know, how do we engage them, which we've done successfully, fortunately, with, um, with asking them how we need your help. So it's great. Yeah, Liverpool as well, the, the virus is rising. So we've just got to be careful. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Jackie, that's great. And that really shows the variety of, of work that's happening in our communities at the moment. And I think you put the nail on the head about people returning to work and not having that local connection, that 20 minute, 20 minute circle, living circle anymore. Um, everyone's been so inspired by the people who've spoken already that I've got loads of volunteers now, it's fantastic. So I think what we'll do is, if it's okay if everyone, um, I've got um, Madame Zucchini and Gert and Katrina, who would also like to contribute. If we could keep it to about a minute or two minutes each, that'd be fantastic, because I know Paul's got a few other things that he'd like to share with you. So we go over to um, Madame Zucchini in Sheffield, please. Uh, yeah, I thought I'd, I'm a, um, I've become, I used to be a community worker, I've become a vegetable artist and performer, which is why I've got the silly name, <laughs> um, it's Natalie it. in real life, um, but um, I panicked basically when lockdown happened, but then I thought, no, use your front window as a, like a, like my stall or my performance area. So I may have been making vegetable characters and creatures in my window every day, so must be, I don't know, 120 odd now. So just to show you today, where is he? This is uh, Romanescu Polanski. It's a bit niche, it's a bit niche. So, uh, and, I, and I was saying in the group, I like hearing the parents outside trying to explain my random sense of humor to people. But I do do Peppa Pig sometimes and things like that. So that has been for me, it's kind of kept me sane Every day I have to create the creature, people react to it. People even actually sometimes have shoved a fiver through my door, which initially I found a bit embarrassing. But now I'm thinking, no, it's fine, take it. <laughs> so that's, that's, yeah, that's what I wanted to say, really. That is absolutely brilliant. I can see everyone's responses to that. Everyone loves oh. it. It's one of those things you think, why didn't I think of that? Why didn't someone think of that? It's such, such genius and the joy that it, I'm sure it has brought to people and your, from your front window will be immeasurable. It's absolutely fantastic. So Gert, you, would you like to follow the vegetable artist? Uh, yes. Uh, hello everybody. We had uh, Noreen from North Island, Northern Ireland and Emma from Cumbria in our group and, and, and we shared a few 
good projects. Uh, I just uh, talked to, of some which, which we haven't uh, come across yet. Uh, rock snake, uh, uh, combining a bit of, of uh, rock painting and uh, putting these rocks together in a, a communal space, I think around the village hall. Uh, uh, it was in that case. Uh, so it's a bit of a take off from, from the other person talking about uh, the, the rocks. I think a rock snake can easily move as well. And that might be uh, putting in a bit of creativity by painting rocks um, as well. We have a valley park nearby and uh, we tried, uh, or people tried to put a little bit of surprise in there each day so that uh, it kept attractive for, for, for children who were going with their parents the same walk day after day after day and then they could explore something and find something and take a photo and uh, these photos then were shared online. One of our concerns was, we discussed about that not everybody is online, how to reach out to those who are not online. Um, little laminated posters on lampposts uh, were quite good alongside obviously flyers you can put through, through people's doors so that at least people knew some telephone numbers to, to contact. And uh, one of the things I think which, which uh, we found quite important was uh, how to keep uh, our shopping habits to go to local shops instead of the big uh, supermarkets ahead because quite a lot of local shops uh, who had access uh, to to uh, things uh, because they normally catered for restaurants and all of that dried out up obviously uh, 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 were quite quick in, 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 in putting uh, an online portal up so that you could as a private person buy from them online and got it get it delivered by telephone and get it delivered and uh, some of these companies said we'll, we'll, we'll see this as a, a, a quite nice second income stream in the future. And so how to make us uh, 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 avoiding our old shopping habits to go to the big five uh, and, 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 and to keep these kind of niche uh, markets going was, was one of our uh, discussion points. Thank you. That's, that's great, Gert. Thank you. And I think that's a really interesting point about making new habits. Um, I'm not going to um, try and remember one of the things, you know, you have to do something 12 times for it to become a new habit. So has, has lockdown been long enough for these new habits to establish themselves so much that they become second nature for some of us? Maybe not. Yes, I think there's a bit of head shaking there. Um, and last but not least, we'll go to Katrina um, to hear about their group. Um, so... Um we had somebody from Scotland who, who um, we lost right at the beginning. So, so we we're sorry about that. Somebody from Estelmere, we, um, I think he had a problem with internet connection. Um, we had somebody from Wales and three people from the West Country, two from Bristol and one from Cornwall. And um, it's Kate in Bristol were, has been um, basically organizing volunteers in the area. She set up, they set up a, a Facebook group and they've been reaching out to people who needed help like shopping and um, in the sort of initial stages, that was the main thing they were doing. But since then they've also, um, they've had litter picks and um, they've also helped um, encourage people who wanted to donate to food banks to continue to do so um, and basically they would go and pick the donations up from their front doorstep because these people a lot of them weren't going out um, and I think that was probably most of what Kate said so, so the lady in Cornwall I forget her name now she was um, saying that they've been um, you know basically doing a lot in the community they've got a very strong and tightly knit community and they're really keen to keep that going um, but now that all the visitors are coming um, from for the holidays they're finding it very different because people it's almost like people who live locally has, have gone back into lockdown because they don't want to take the risk with these people coming and that there's um, issues in Cornwall about the number of critical care beds and the R8 is going up, so it all sounds as if it's getting a bit heavy in Cornwall and difficult to manage. Um, but the community is very strong, so that's that's really good. Um, and then in Wales, the person from Wales was saying that um, she's been in lockdown and hasn't really been volunteering. She's been really focusing on looking after herself and spending time in nature, but also being, being able to buy fresh vegetables locally from people who um, used to um, supply restaurants. 
Um, so that's been um, a positive from that. And then, of course, in, in her part of Wales, they're still in lockdown, really, until next week, I think. And then um, I myself in Bristol was talking about um, a seminar I went on, a webinar I went on last week about poverty and deprivation and the connection between that and, and coronavirus, which I found really interesting. I posted the link in the chat, but you should be able to see the... Um, the, the video of that webinar if anyone wants to attend it and on the back of that video uh, or that webinar I have decided with our group our clean air alliance that I'd like to explore the connection now between poverty deprivation black and ethnic minority people and air pollution and do that with Bristol University so I've got a cohort of people who are happy to work with that on that with me and in, um, in our group and so I'm looking for people anyone who's interested in working with us on that because it will be national it, it you know be based in Bristol but it will, will be national so I hope that was quick enough that was that was absolutely spot on Katrina thank you um, if you want to put any of your if you want to put your contact details or any information about that project in the, the chat again please feel do Feel free I'll put to our email through. address in there. Yeah, yeah, it's it's got quite long now, so people may be um, having trouble to track some of the chat, but you can save it um, at the end of the session as well. The box where you usually type, there's three little dots that gives you an option to save the chat, and that'll just save as a as a text document, so you can go back and look at that afterwards. So that that was great. It's really 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 inspiring. Um, but it's now my chance to pass back to to Paul to hear from him again. Right, here we go. Let me share my screen again and get that uh, PowerPoint back up. Thank you everyone for that. That was amazing, by the way. Lovely to hear all the stuff. So let's have a look from current slide. PowerPoint, here we go. You'd already seen those. So with the last one was the feedback. Now we're going to the top tips. So these are some top tips from me. Obviously we've heard a couple already because of all the great stuff going on. And we'll have a chance to share our our own individual tips what we've learned all the time but this is the, the headline is of this is just a really obvious one just keeping connected i think that's the thing a few people are worried that going back to work etc they'll sort of you know they won't have the time to do these little bits in the community but it's just about just spending 20 minutes or so just keeping connected so let's have a look how we can do that that's the headline these are just a few ideas of how we can do that so I know lots of people have already done this, um, but if you haven't, it's, it's well worth doing, especially WhatsApp, because it's just quick little pings. But it might be, if people have already done one just for lockdown, it might be worth doing one for like ideas coming out of lockdown. So that sort of hybrid bit. And these are some um, tips from me. So one of them, I know a few people are doing this already. So about starting a weekly, doesn't have to be weekly, but weekly would be nice. Socially distanced meetup, but a network. So people are still getting together, the meeting on the park or something, and just all going for a walk. Obviously with masks on and stuff, if, it, if that's in your area still. So where I'm from, there'd definitely be that. Um, I don't know proper rules now, actually. I think they've gone a lot stricter, haven't they, Northwest? So I won't be allowed to meet anyone. But if people are allowed, go for the network. Really good idea, take your dogs. Ask your neighbours what the dog's called and invite them along. So that's one. Um, another one. So socially, I know a few in Salford have been doing litter picking and they used to go, all go together, but now they're just doing it individually. And then they're putting that on WhatsApp group. Little, uh, so if they've done street to street, they'll just say they've done, I don't know, Regent Road to download some lane. If anybody knows that in Salford. Um, it's where Lowry did all these paintings, if anybody knows that. Um, so the matchstick men so yeah somebody other one street then they'll pull somebody other next street so they're still socially distant so they're, they're still doing the litter picking that's a great one then getting back to the veggie so a, a few people I know if, instead of doing it they're still doing it in the gardens or on the windowsill or whatever the balconies but they're also they're getting a communal space and they put the plants in there as well so they're keeping connected like that so even though they're doing individual stuff keep it connected by having a nice little community garden. And that could be somebody, if, somebody, if you know someone who's got a few quid and they've got a big, a big backyard or a big garden, very nice. And they don't mind sharing it. Right, now then, creating a mutual art project. 
again, I got this idea from uh, Manchester. There's a lot of new rules knocking about. And so one of them, somebody's actually done, they've drawn the outline of the new rule and then people go along and just fill bits in, bits of colour. So again, it's keeping people connected like that. Thought that were really nice and it comes along over the weeks, hopefully leading up to uh, being able to be out a lot down there. And part of the art stuff as well is the stones. Somebody mentioned rocks before, but people have been painting stones and putting them in, in park. And they're nice for to go along and visit. And it, again, keeping people connected. Now then, I quite like this one. Um, I, know, I know people, I know loads of people. No, but it's, I don't. It's just people who, who's told me these ideas. And when, when I said I'm doing a workshop on this, and they're like, what about this? And what about this? So creating an online street scrapbook. So it's sharing local histories of that street and families and dogs' names, cats' names, I don't know, but and loads of positive stories. And again, com coming out of uh, coming out of lockdown, that would have been nice just to continue that sort of scene. So Facebook's nice for that. <clears throat> Gives you a bit of lo local pride as well. Um, and then this is a bit more practical stuff, looking out for the latest funding opportunities. Uh, on my next page, I'm going to show you a few of them. And like I said, we're going to share this. So there's some really nice little websites to have a look at to get funding. And then that leads back to the communal veggie guide and stuff. But you know, if you, if you need a little patch of land doing up or whatever. So let's have a look. And the last one is loads of just, just I didn't want to do a, like Google loads and then nobody could have those. So these are just from me. Um, the last one is online training. There's loads of it out there. And again, the next page I'll show you, and that's really good for people to sort to be doing some training. They're only short courses, a lot of them, but they're really good, really worthwhile doing. So this next page is the, this is all the web links. So the top one is obviously Eden Project Communities one. So that's our community action response page. So that, I have a bit of an explanation, and I want to do the official line here, just in case I miss something. So the community action response is led by Eden and our partners, and it's uh, from different sectors. And the and it, the the aim is to sort of join these partners together and encourage everyone to do what they can to support their communities and neighbours, um, particularly uh, people who are vulnerable and isolated. So that's the top one, well worth a look. The next one, the National Lottery Community Fund. I don't know how, how many people have applied to that. Can't see screen. You put, give, give me a little land up, or put in chat if you've applied. Tell me what you think, because my other half works for lottery, so she'd love to know. <laughs> She's actually a researcher, so it, it, good or bad, she, she likes it, so she can change it. But they've done the applying for emergency funding. Um, that's the link in England, but there is other links to stuff. I didn't actually know I'd put, copied that one. But if you just go on their page and find it, so. Christine from Salford, who got the um, £6,000, that was from that fund. And apparently it's really easy to do, I think. Then there's the My Community page. So that one, when you when you go on that, it's just, I don't know if you know these, but really good. It's just a database with loads of info, funding, courses, all sorts. You just put, put what you're searching for in there, almost like a Google for community stuff. That's really good. And then the Mutual Aid website, so look at all the groups. And the NCVO, that's really good for training, the one below it, the, the second to last one. National Council for Voluntary Organisations, I think that's called. I always forget. But NC, because everybody calls it NCVO. But that's really good for training stuff again. And they do quite a lot of uh, webinars. So that's nice. And the bottom one is Funding Central. And that's, we sort of always promote this one. Again, it's almost like a, a, a Google just for funding. So really, really good. So there's the, my top tips. There is the top tips web links. And now I'd like everybody to share their tips because I'm only a tiny bit of information. Think how much is in here. So if any of those have inspired you to share your tips, so you, you know some that are, we've never heard before something really original, love you to share. So we've got another breakout room, yeah? So Katie, do you want to go for that? I enjoyed your, your breakout rooms again. And I'm, I'm hoping that I managed to mix up the people so you had some different folk to meet this time. Um, what would be lovely was if each group could 
um, nominate someone, hope you've done that already, to share their top tip. Um, you can do it verbally, you can give me a wave and I'll try and um, do that. Or you, again, you can type in chat. I can see Kay waving already. Um, obviously, your video is not on. Kay and Janet, I see you two. Um, pop a message in and if you just want to share your, your tip in, in here. So, who was Kay, I think, wave first and then Janet and then Sarah. Does that sound okay? So, over to you, Kay, your top tip. Hi, sorry, I couldn't unmute it again. Uh, yeah, I was in room one and our top tip is keep it local, so buy local, support local. Um, I'm in Cornwall and we found local businesses, family run a lot of the time, were delivering, even our local DIY store was delivering throughout lockdown. So you'd, you'd bring up, put your order, pay, and then they'd drop it off at your door. Um, and so now, um, I live in a small community of 300 houses, our shop delivered to us you know even though it's like right in the middle of us um we still we're in lockdown they delivered to us so now we're using them more than we perhaps did before um to support them to say thank you and and, and that's you know the local businesses supported local communities it's now time for local communities to support local businesses that's that's a lovely little sound bite to finish on isn't it I like that thank you very much Kay. um janet i think was was it jack in cumbria next Hi, we uh, actually decided on two top tips, one each, there was only two of us in the room, so we had plenty oh. to chat about. <laughs> so one of them is if people have got the demographics where there's a lot of older people, um, certainly we have with our helpline, hit your pharmacies, get the numbers out in the pharmacies. The, pharm the, the older people respect the pharmacist like their doctor. So whereas they don't want to expect, um, accept advice, they're too proud. If the pharmacist gives them a number and says contact that, they will do it we've had an amazing we've helped over 500 people through one helpline with it um, and the other one which is like really really important particularly in the sector we're working in is be kind to yourselves make sure that you're looking after yourselves because unless you do you just burn out and and, and it was certainly i've been coordinating probably about 16 volunteers of different at different levels and one thing we've done is regularly check in to make sure we're all looking after ourselves so just remember that because we all look after everyone else and forget to look after ourselves. So that's our top tips. <laughs> I'll you. let you away with two because they were both so good. Thank you, Janet. So over to Sarah in, I'm thinking Cambridge. I said in Cambridge here. Um, so we, I was in breakout four, I think, with Emma and Noreen. Um, and we ended up by deciding that actually you need to bring some normality to the people living there rather than always expecting them to go out and access um access it elsewhere so for some people it is being being socially distanced and being isolated and locked down is actually their normal life and i think we've often forgotten that that these people are hidden and um and we've all sort of We've, we've all had a taste of how that is now. And so we can now think, okay, so bringing some normality, Noreen in um, Northern Ireland was talking about the parades and how they, and the people um, in the villages were actually sitting in their front gardens and the parades were going past. Um, so they actually brought them to the village rather than expecting everybody to go into the town to, to see them. And so, and, and for them, the parade is very, very normal. So it, it still felt like a bit of normal life. So um, that and thinking outside the box were our two top tips. Sometimes you've just got to put it out there and see what happens. That's absolutely fantastic. Thank you, Sarah. I'm going to let you off with two as well. So if any of the remaining groups would like to have two tips, um, I might just, just might just squeeze that in. Um, um, is there... Oh, Joe, would you like to? Yeah, who was, the, who was next? I think that was all the hands I saw so okay. far. I don't want to queue jump. Rosie's got a hand up, but if we have Rosie after Joe, that okay. would be great. That's fine. So um, two of our groups, have had to leave because they've got 
meeting. So Lindsay from Blackpool and Kiri from Bolton. Um, I was in with Misa, who's, uh, I'm not sure who you work for, but you're a community, hold on. Community builder. Oh, are they a community builder. Oh, I need to talk to you. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> basically, I, we were talking about food parcels. We were talking about um, the support from the food parcel, uh, you know, the, the emergency aid. Um, I lost my job in January. I have no money. I have no money to buy food. And so I rely, I've been relying. I never thought this would happen but I've been relying on receiving food parcels and I do give things back to the, to the food banks, but um, you know, they've had lots of people who have just, who have decided to say, I no longer need this. So that's fine. But, uh, but yeah, so basically Lindsay, very interesting. She's got a craft noon coming up at three o'clock apparently. She's already publicised it on the chat. Um, she has been running a befriending service as part of Blackpool's response. And um, she is, she's been doing, what's she been doing? She's been doing um, listening in the community and making sure that she retains those volunteers that are looking after and staying in contact with people. As Sarah said, that isolation is the norm for them. So bringing them out of isolation. So I don't know, if Mesa, if there was something else you wanted to say, because that's only one tip and a lot of guff from me. <laughs> yeah, I think we talked mainly about um, listening to the community. So as the community builder, we started going, doing community listening, just um, in an easy, simple, safe place where we st stop basically in a park or something and then announce yeah. that with a flag, pop-up flag. And that's um, because I work with the ACI, Exeter Community Initiatives. So we go there and then we just listen to the community, listen to them, how do they feel about um, the lockdown? What did they do there and what do they like to retain and what do they like to change? Um, and it's so interesting, it's so, it's so worrying. Some of them really are worried about um, stuff to go back to normal and about losing these connections they made already with their neighbors and with mm -hmm. their um, streets. And you can yeah. feel it in some roads because life and system are busy. Um, yeah. So our job is actually to find um, loads of ways to uh, support this togetherness and support uh, this um, local community group oh, uh, to carry on. Fantastic, mm. thank you. Thank you yeah. both for showing that. We're just coming up to our last two minutes. I just want to give Rosie a time to, to share as well. Um, and then I'll, yeah, and then I'll hand over to Paul. Because I know everybody's, everybody's really pressed for time. You've probably all got things on at two o'clock as well. So Rosie, if you'd love to share, that'd be great. And then we'll That's quite nice and succinct as well. It's basically Sandy was saying how they have a work-free zone. Um, just because working from home, it bleeds. I mean, it, I think probably all experience it some in some way or another. It just bleeds into the rest of your evening. So having a cut off time, and you have a Zoom meeting, whatever, and it has mindfulness, yoga, you have a chat. It's anything but work, basically. So yeah, work free zones is our big one to get people chilling and looking after their mental health and not just working. But, yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Rosie. I'll hand it back to you, Paul. Just unmute, I have one more slide from the PowerPoint and that's it. Let me just go to share. Let's have a look, share screen. Here we go, share. Can you all see that? Yeah, so my last slide is, why is it not working? This, that's it. Just thank you, thank you to everyone. I know everybody needs to go at two and what have you. Just th thanks for joining. And like I said, uh, good luck with all your projects and ideas. Just amazing. And it will, it will carry on, I think, definitely. And, and get even stronger coming out of, of lockdown. Um, yeah, we've got a Facebook page, in Project Communities. Have we got a survey, um, Katie, or not? I'm not sure. We have. I've just, I've just shared oh, the link no. in the, the chat. It's just to um, 
gather your feedback and any ideas you have about future sessions like this that you'd like to take part in. Yeah, We'd just, like to define these around what people are interested in. Yeah, exactly. It'd be great. And there's more workshops and events on our website too. And I, I just, I, I, this quote is on our website. I love it. The future is ours to invent. Let's create a world we want to live in. And how apt is that for this sort of, this because of the new normal, it's ours to create really, isn't it? How, how that's going to look whilst we've been